This video is sponsored by PUBG Mobile. Hey guys, this is Austin. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now if you go all the way back to 2011 when the first Galaxy Note came out, it kind of changed smartphones in a big way. Quite literally a big way, as not only is it one of the biggest smartphones of its time, but fast forward to 2018, and that has kind of become the standard. This has a massive 6.4 inch screen. But the real question, is this the Note 9 even worth it? With an eye-wateringly high $1,000 plus price tag, at first glance, the Note 9 doesn't look all that different than its predecessor. However, that's not necessarily going to be a bad thing. The previous phone was one of the nicest builds and designs of any smartphone in 2017, and that definitely follows through in 2018. With an all glass aluminum build, there's no one who's gonna complain that the Note 9 is an ugly looking smartphone. The only problem, and this is actually kind of shared with the Note 8, is that it is really, really big. Now I know, I just talked all about how the Note was one of the very first phones to bring phablets to the mainstream, but this is just really tall. As you'd expect from a Samsung flagship, you are going to be getting IP68 water resistance, wireless charging, and if you look on the bottom, what's very unique with this, almost no other phone has it, I actually open this up here, you're going to see a little round port. Now this is actually not all that common in phones these days, but it's known as a headphone jack. It's not really something that most people have. This is back in the days before Bluetooth where you use like wires or something to connect your headphones. I don't know, it sounds really weird. I don't think anyone actually uses it. Um, but in theory, if you wanted to plug in your headphones to your Note, you can do that. Um, there's also an S Pen, but no one cares about hey that. Hey guys, this is Austin, and today we're doing something just a little bit different. One of the big upgrades on the Galaxy Note 9 this year are stereo speakers, which is especially helpful considering that before, having a single speaker on the bottom of such a giant phone seemed ridiculous. But what they're doing here, just like on a lot of other phones, including the S9 and the iPhone, is they're going to be using the earpiece as well as the bottom speaker to give you a pretty convincing stereo effect. It also helps that it's properly loud. So last week, I took a day off, I left everyone at the office with one simple mission. You're also going to find the Bixby button. I'm still going to complain about it, and Samsung is still going to do absolutely nothing to fix it. But luckily, I have a much better solution. One thing I have had some issues with is the fingerprint sensor. Now thankfully Samsung has moved it to below the cameras as opposed to right beside it, which is a nice change. However, the problem is, is that it actually isn't all that accurate. What's new this year is that you swipe your finger across the sensor once to be able to enroll it as a fingerprint. Now that sounds great and it's a lot faster to set up, but the problem is it's just really inaccurate for me. Now sure, being able to tap your finger on a bunch of times when you first set up the phone is kind of annoying, but at least, you know, the fingerprint sensor is pretty good. Whereas here, no matter how many times I try to re-enroll and set up different fingers, it just isn't all that accurate for me. Now maybe it's just an issue with my Note 9, whether it's the software or the hardware, but the good thing is the facial recognition is going to be pretty solid. So you have a form of Face ID known as Face Unlock, as well as Iris Recognition, which in combination should be able to unlock pretty quickly. That's not going to be quite as fast as something like the OnePlus 6, but it's around on par with the iPhone 10, and honestly, security-wise, feels to be okay. I mean, it won't unlock for Ken, it'll unlock for me, so... I guess that's a good thing. With a Snapdragon 845 on board, just as you would expect, this is going to be right up there with the rest of the Android flagships of this year. And while on paper, it's going to fall a little bit behind the iPhone 10 and its crazy fast A11 chip, you're definitely not going to be disappointed with the performance of the Note 9. What this isn't, at least based on my first impressions, is as fast as the OnePlus 6. And considering that this is going to be about double the price, that's not really going to be a good sign. Now, a big part of that has to do with software. OnePlus has a fairly stock looking skin, which doesn't have a lot of extra bloat. And while I don't want to say that the Note 9 is full of the old school touch whiz of Samsung's past, but it is definitely not going to be as speedy, and that higher resolution screen doesn't make things better. One of the big advantages of the Note 9 has to do with its gaming capabilities. So of course, there's the biggest, hottest games of 2018, which are available on the Note, and of course, we have to talk about the battle royale that everyone is playing right now, PUBG Mobile, who are awesome enough to sponsor this video. This is the official mobile version of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. If somehow you haven't heard of it, it's a free-to-play battle royale game on both Android and iOS, which features 100 players all dropping into a massive island for a winner-takes-all battle. I don't need to tell you that. You play PUBG, right? Well, PUBG is now on your phone. As you'd expect with a high-end phone like the Note 9, it's going to have no problem playing PUBG at fairly high settings, but since it's Android, you can actually customize it all the way up to Ultra HD, you can change the frame rate cap, you can even change the style of the game. It's especially impressive considering that you're getting the full experience with both of the game's huge maps, and it's all going to be powered by Unreal Engine and give you full 7.1 audio out. Not only can you play with four people in a squad, but they're going to be faster paced arcade modes, which are over in eight minutes for a quick game. I'm always going to be partial to a mouse and keyboard, but the controls really are not going to be bad, especially for a mobile shooter. The moral of the story, PUBG Mobile is fun regardless of where you play it, 
that's especially good on the Note 9. With a 6.4 inch 2960x1440p AMOLED display, it shouldn't be any surprise that this is one of the nicest smartphone screens on the market. Now sure, when you put it side by side with the iPhone 10, it looks very similar. And to be totally honest, Samsung has been on top of the panel game for a few years now. So even something like an S7 or an S8 looks good. But this, this is about as good as it gets. One of the more surprising upgrades with the Note 9 has to do with the battery. And no, it's not that it's going to catch on fire or anything, because that's totally not what used to happen. Instead, the Galaxy Note 9 has a much larger 4,000 milliamp hour cell. Maybe because of that, Samsung was a little conservative last year with a fairly small 3,300 milliamp hour battery. But this year with a full 4,000 on board, now these are going to easily last through a full day, something that couldn't always be said about the Note 8 or even the S9, but also gives some differentiation, which has always been one of my big issues with the Note. If you're not into the S Pen, a lot of times it just makes sense to buy the normal Galaxy S. So at its core, the Note 9 still has a pair of 12 megapixel cameras, one wide angle camera with a variable aperture, as well as a telephoto option. Now I've always felt like, especially on the S9, the variable aperture is nice, but it doesn't make a huge difference. Now while it's not necessarily a new camera feature, the S Pen has been upgraded with the ability to use it as a selfie pen? Remote? I guess. Just snap selfies by pressing the button. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so we do have the live focus mode, which is going to be the same as the Galaxy S9. And while it works for the most part, it does have some problems with some pretty major differences in contrast. So yeah. That's not great. I've noticed a, a lot of overexposing the background with this, especially in some of the pictures that I've taken, it definitely has that issue. One of my big issues with the Note 9 is that you could have bought the cheaper and almost identical Galaxy S9 Plus six months ago. Now sure, smartphones are definitely evolving, and there are some advantages with going with the S Pen and with the Note, but when you look at other phones like the Oppo Find X, which brings terrific design and something that's legitimately different around this price point, this is kind of a harder sell, especially when you consider that the OnePlus 6 is equal to this in a lot of ways at half the price. On top of that, there's some serious competition coming up with the next generation iPhone and Pixel right around the corner. Now sure, if you really need that S Pen, by all means go pick up a Note 9. But at $1,000 plus, I just don't think it's worth it for most people. And of course, huge shout out to PUBG Mobile. If you guys wanna check it out, the link will be in the description. And let me know, would you actually wanna pick up the Galaxy Note 9?